Initiation is the ultimate in the process of transformation. Why is initiation into meditation or initiation to a master is essential? As such as man exists, he is asleep. Asleep means we are not aware of our words. We are like a robot and on his own, even if he is waking, he is asleep. He is asleep, his asleep, his sleep is neurotic. He cannot wake up from his sleep on his own. He may wake up and still remain in slumber. Just as when you wake up in the morning, you do not want to get up from the bed. You turn your side and you say that you are waking, but you get into a nap again. A master is needed to wake up from such neurosis. Initiation is the process for him to remain in contact with one who is awakened. Without this, it is almost impossible for you to be awake. You are capable of dreaming even when you are awake. When it is said man is asleep, this has to be understood. Man dreams 24 hours. In the night, when we are close to the outer world, we continue to dream. During the day, our senses are open. Our senses open in the outer world of duality, the objects and beings. What we see every moment, new objects, new beings, and we continue to interact with these. This is duality. It is through the senses that we continue to experience the outer world. But the dream continues within. Just close your eyes and you start dreaming again. Dreams are a continuity inside. You are aware of the outer world, but that awareness is imposed on the dreaming mind. Thus continues the process of dreaming. In such a case, we cannot envision reality Although we are awake, this is how dreams are imposed on reality. What we actually see is our projection on reality. Everyone is plagued with dreams. A father is full of his unfulfilled dreams. You become an object of projection for your father. Your father will project his dreams on you. Then whatever he understands about you, gets mixed up with his own dreams. So projecting one's dreams on someone else is different than loving. Loving is a totally different phenomenon. Loving means you understand the potential of the person and you help him to grow into that potential. And when you begin to grow into that potential, this is Love, it is not you are imposing your dreams. So projecting one's dreams on someone else is different than loving. You love someone, you do not impose your dreams on him. He will appear quite different than when you do not love him. The other becomes quite different when you use the other as a screen to project your dreams dreams. When someone loves you, the dream is different. Also that person appears different. On the contrary, when you do not love someone, the person is the same. The screen is also the same, but projection differs. In that case, you are not using the other as a screen to project your dreams. Things can change again. Once again, you can love the other and then he will appear different. Normally, we do not see what this is. We go on seeing our own dreams projected on reality. A master is not the same to each one of you. Each one projects something different on the master. In reality, he is one as far as he is concerned. If the master himself is dreaming, then he will differ in each moment.
it is so because each moment his interaction will differ but when the master is awakened then he will remain the same in all situations and circumstances his way of analysis explanation will remain the same it is like you taste the water of the ocean from any place it tastes the same buddha said the real taste of an enlightened one is that he is always the same it is just like sea water its taste never changes wherever you taste it from as a person you are a projection of ideas notions conceptions and interpretations like a projector you go on projecting things that are nowhere but inside you the whole becomes a screen then you cannot be aware of yourself this is deep sleep i have heard there was a sufi master hijra who one day an angel appeared to him in a dream and told him to save as much water as possible because the next day the devil will poison all the water and whoever drank that water would turn mad so that night the sufi collected as much water as he could the phenomenon really happened the next day everyone became mad after drinking the poisoned water the whole city became mad no one knew what had happened it was only the sufi who had, was not mad but everyone thought that the sufi had gone mad but he knew what had happened no one believed him he went on drinking his water and remained sane by himself however he could not continue for long in this way the entire city was living in an altogether different world and one day the rumor came that it would that she would be caught and put into prison it was believed that she had gone mad finally one morning they got hold of him he had two options either accept the treatment for his madness or be prepared to go to prison he was not allowed freedom he was condemned as mad it was based on the conclusion that he spoke a different language that could not be understood by the masses the sufi was at a loss he tried to remind people of their past through every possible means but the people had forgotten everything he was incomprehensible to them so they surrounded his house and caught him at this the sufi asked to be given some time to cure himself he went to the well and drank the same water as he drank the water he became one like them the whole city was happy that the sufi was cured now now his madness was no more you are asleep but you are never aware of this sleep when everyone is mad and you are also mad you can never be aware of this initiation is therefore the way to awaken you from this sleep by initiation is meant that now you have surrendered to someone who is awake you are a part of the world a part of the duality and this mad this madness living in this world you are always plagued with dreams such feelings can also come from someone who is in a sleeping state sleep is not always deep in the beginning sleep wavers sometimes it is deep at other times it gets shallow there is a similarity between ordinary sleep and metaphysical sleep ordinary sleep fluctuates between various planes and levels metaphysical sleep also fluctuates at times you are on the borderline you are very close to being a buddha you can then understand something that buddha is saying however whatever is heard or understood is not exactly the same but you get a glimpse of the truth it is like looking at the sunrise from a room through a window you are not yet in the openness under the vast sky 
the master observes this a person who is on the borderline of his metaphysical sleep needs initiation he needs to be within the energy field of an awakened or enlightened master he can hear something he can understand something he can see something as well everything around him is like the mist yet still he feels something thus he approaches an enlightened one not really knowing the essence of enlightenment he is ready to surrender this is the only way to wake up from this metaphysical sleep sleep of lives only this this much this person can do surrendering brings the understanding that something other than sleep is now happening somehow he feels this but he cannot exactly know what is what this is whenever an enlightened one passes those who are on the borderline of this metaphysical sleep can recognize there is something different about this person this used to happen to hazrat shah bahauddin naqshband razi allah taala who he would initiate the people while he is going anywhere he is just walking on the street he sees someone he is able to discern that this person is on the borderline and he will initiate him this you will notice in case of jesus let the dead bury the dead you follow me this is the way one of his disciple was initiated a different breeze a different energy field surrounds this person he behaves differently he speaks differently he lives differently he walks differently something different has happened to him he looks like one of us but in reality he is much more much more than total human intellect can comprehend he is the pulse of the unknown so those who are on the borderline can feel this but they are asleep also the borderline sleep is transient they can fall back into the sleep at any time the hindi word for it is tandra the sleep is very easy to be broken before they fall back into sleep or deeper unconsciousness it is essential for them to surrender to an awakened one this is initiation the master does not need in surrender anything from you except your readiness to accept the reality as it is but it is from the side of the one who is to be initiated he is capable of doing anything for himself he knows that if he does not surrender now it will be impossible later on this moment cannot be lost such moments come only once in our lives it is not in anyone's hand to be on the borderline once again it happens for so many reasons that they are beyond human control this is the beginning of the process of initiation on the part of the initiated this refers to let go a state of total surrender it can never be partial a partial surrender is never surrender it is like deceiving yourself in partial surrender you hold something within and that which is within may push you again into deep sleep and then you have lost the opportunity for many lives remember that unsurrendered part will prove fatal any moment it can go back into sleep surrender is always total for surrender total trust is an essential precondition the moment you surrender totally change begins to happen then you cannot fall back into dreams when you surrender the entire projecting mind gets shattered this projecting mind is born out of ego also it remains connected to ego so it cannot exist without the ego ego is the base of this projecting mind when you surrender you have surrendered the cause of your existence up to now you have given up completely initiation means that the person who was sleepy till now is seeking help to be awakened he surrenders to the one who is awake through this 
Though this seems simple, it is not so. When you go to an enlightened one to surrender yourself, what are you surrendering? Is your sleep, your dreams, and your neurosis and nothing else. Nothing else needs to be surrendered because you are nothing more than your sleep, your dream, and your neurosis. In fact, you surrender your sleep, your dreams, your neurosis, and the whole nonsense of the past. From the side of the initiated, this is surrender. Surrender of the past, but from the side of the one who initiates you, it is a responsibility for the future. It is a responsibility for the transcendence and for the birth of new man out of you. The one who is asleep can never be responsible. Responsibility comes with awakening. This is the fundamental law of life. One who is asleep cannot be responsible even for himself. I remember my one of the brother used to like the milk. So my mother will give him the milk in the middle of the night when he is asleep. He will wake him up and give him the milk. In the morning he used to quarrel that he did not get his share of the milk because he has drank the milk in deep sleep. One who is asleep cannot be responsible even for himself and the awakened one is responsible even for others. So when you come to an awakened one, he becomes responsible for you. That is why it is said, those who come to Jesus, Jesus will save them. That is why an awakened Krishna tells Arjun, leave everything and come to me, surrender at my feet. Or as Jesus says, I am the truth, I am the door, I am the gate, come and pass through me. I will certainly be a witness on the day of your judgment. I will answer for you. Guru Nanak gave the name to his temple as Guru Dwara. Guru means master. Dwara has two meanings. Dwara means through the master or Dwara means door also. Master is the door to the beyond. This is analogy. Every day is a day of judgment. Not only every day. Instead, every moment is the day of judgment. There is nothing like the last day. These are the words of Jesus that he spoke to his disciples who could not understand him. They were within the energy field of Jesus and this had brought them to an understanding of the message of Jesus. However, the present day followers of Jesus cannot understand the message. They are only interested in business and not the transformation. Jesus was in fact saying, I will be responsible for you and I will answer for you in front of the Father. I will be there as a witness, surrender to me and I will be your witness. This is the responsibility of the Master. When he initiates you, he undertakes to transform you so that a new being is born out of you. No one who is asleep himself can take the responsibility for you. One can be responsible for the others only when he need not be responsible for himself. He is unburdened. He is no more. He is just the pulse of the unknown. An emptiness that simply echoes the whispers of the unknown. He is the manifestation of the unknown in finite form. So only such a person can really initiate you, not otherwise. No particular person can initiate anyone. And if that happens, and this is happening every day, is like a blind trying to lead the blind. However, in reality, both perish. One who is asleep cannot initiate, but the ego cannot help. This attitude is dangerous. The whole initiation, the whole mystery of it, the whole beauty of it has now become so ugly because of those who are not entitled to initiate only one who is not plagued by ego, who has no dreams within, can initiate. Otherwise, initiation is a great sin. In the olden days, initiation was not necessary. One has to wait for a long time to be initiated. 
Sometimes this waiting was for entire life. This was discipline. And now there is a competition among the pseudo masters to initiate as many as possible. This has become an ego game. I come from a Sufi family of enlightened masters. Sufis will initiate you only when you have waited for a long time. When you stayed with a master within his energy field, you were being prepared. You had to wait without questioning. When the time comes, master himself would say that the time has come. The Sufi masters remained in whatever vocation was theirs. If a master was a shoemaker, then one would continue helping him in the trade for years. And you could not even question the relevance of shoemaking. So you went on helping the master and waiting for years. There was no talk of prayer or meditation. He would not talk of anything but shoemaking. Your waiting was prayer. Your waiting was the meditation. Helping the master in shoemaking would cleanse you. I was never taught any prayer or any technique of meditation. I was a witness to all those who were initiated. My job was to fix the meditation room, take care of the personal needs of the master, take care of the visitors and answer their queries when the message of the master was not understood. One day I complained to another master about it. I was told, the elder master has given me everything, all that is, but had been bestowed on you earlier and this now needs to do. When you are around a master, a simple waiting, this unquestionable waiting prepares the ground for complete surrender. So it was only after a long wait initiation was possible. My uncle Sufi master, my mother and father were initiated on the night of the Hindu festival of colors. My uncle was a young boy who was collecting firewood and donation that night for the Fagwa fire. Hindus burned the holy fire on the day of the night of colors and my mother was asleep and was not interested in anything like initiation. In the past, she had requested many times to be initiated, but every time the master refused. And my father knew nothing of initiation. Just one month ago, he had been married. But the initiation for him was necessary because he has entered into a married life which was pre-planned by the Master Sheikh Brijmohanlal so that the child that is born out of this conjugal relation would carry a special traits and continue the work. They all resented the idea of initiation, but all were on the borderline, borderline of the metaphysical sleep and they had to be brought by force so that my grandfather, the Sufi, could initiate them. Such is the way of the masters. Now everything is different. No one wants to wait. We are time conscious. Because of this initiation has become difficult. You cannot be initiated. The whole running of the present day mind is because of the fear of death. We are only conscious of death, our body. There is no consciousness of the deathless, that which is never born, never dies. In the past, aspirants were conscious of the deathless within. There was no hurry and his initiation was easy. In fact, everything was easy. If you are in a hurry and the master initiates you, your running or your dream state, it is a device. A device so that you can wait. Master has used this device to persuade you into the process. On the contrary, when master asks you to wait, then your process of transformation cannot begin. In such a case, the master will allow you to wait afterwards. The master creates devices and techniques to play with. While you are playing with such techniques, you can wait as long as the master wants. And when master finds you are ready, then 
the second initiation happens. So there can be a first initiation and second and those who are ready they get the final initiation and still there are people who don't need initiation because enough work has done in the past. They are simply bestowed upon the state of the masterhood or khalifahood. The state when they are ready to start the work in the process of transformation. The second initiation was the first one in the olden days. Now this is a formal initiation and the second will be the informal one. For the second initiation you need not ask the master. He will, this he gives on his own. Surrender on the part of the disciple and the responsibility on the part of the master is the bridge. And as soon as you are ready to surrender, the master appears. Masters have always been in existence. No master can begin the process without surrender. When you can find someone to whom you have to surrender, this is good. But if you do not find, then the master appears. He comes whenever you are ready. When you are empty within, then the spiritual force rushes towards you and fills you. And this process is known as the coming of the master. So when you feel you are ready to surrender, do not delay. Then when the moment comes, just surrender. When you are ready, do not hesitate, surrender. It is not important to whom you surrender. You can even surrender to a tree because the real thing is surrendering, not to whom you are surrendering. Surrender to a tree. It will become your master. And whenever there is surrendering, one always appears who becomes responsible for you. This is what initiation is and important in the process of transformation. Initiation means getting rid of the whole past and not only your past but the past of the collectivity that you are born in, the Christian, the Hindu, the Muslim, the Indian, the Arabian, the German, the white man's past, the black man's past, man's past, woman's past and past as such. It has to be completely burned to ashes so it cannot raise its head again. In a single blow, one has to cut all connections with the past. This is what initiation or surrender is. It is becoming thoroughly dead to the past. It is said, some of the masters said, unless you are ready to cut off your head, you cannot come to me. Cutting off the head means surrendering or this dying to the past. A new process has begun, a new beginning. This is what initiation is all about.